Hollywood is a hungry business. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie cash grabs. All right! <laughs> I'm on my game today. A blockbuster's box office bank is a studio's cash cow. Do you Thanks. know what a clitoris is? Oh. But even surprise hits aren't exempt from a shameless milking. There are people trying to invade your home. Gotta go. Second wave. For this list, we're looking at sequels, spin-offs, prequels, and reboots that no one but business executives asked for. And were designed solely for the purpose of making money. What's the worst thing they could say about me in this dress? Uh, who the hell does she think she is? Number 10, the Home Alone sequels. Home Alone, about an eight-year-old who's left behind by his vacationing family over Christmas, is the highest grossing comedy ever. This is it. Don't get scared now. So, of course, Hollywood has to lose Kevin McAllister again for part two. Yikes, it again. And you know what? We'll give you that one, because Lost in New York has its moments. Fine! But when lead actor Macaulay Culkin grew too old to continue, part three lost someone else. It's okay. It's not you. It's the times. Thanks, hon. How many times can they leave a kid unsupervised before someone calls child services? Apparently, at least two more times, even if some have to be TV movies. Hold up, are you telling me that you're really a 10-year-old who's been left home all by yourself, and now real thieves are trying to break in? Yep, and my sister's trapped in the basement right now, so I gotta go. Number nine, Caddyshack 2. Why not? Are you talking? This film proves that a studio won't let a cash cow project die, even if it's plagued with failures from the beginning of its pre-production phase. Oh, that one's gone! Lead actor and original cast member Rodney Dangerfield quit, his writer-director quit, and only one guy from the original film's cast of five mains grudgingly participated to make this thing happen. Well, they're gone now. No one was laughing with this comedy, and not even to the bank, because it bombed. Big time. Wish he never set foot in this club. <laughs> We're thinking the talking gophers to blame. Ah, <laughs> Number eight, the American Pie Presents series. Oh. oh, Jim? It's not what it looks like. American Pie made over 20 times its budget worldwide, so no sequels would have been bad business. Jackpot, baby! When the third film in the franchise proved that the well of teen sex comedy gags was running dry, Hollywood still fought for more. Again? Not again. Three of the four direct-to-video American Pie Presents spin-offs are loosely based on new Stifler relatives. Cause little bros join in the family business. While the other one has nothing to do with anything. So, I think it's time to try a new approach. The only thing these cash grabs have in common with the original? Eugene Levy who is the only cast member to appear in all the films. No doubt due to the uh, tendencies you alluded to earlier. And, and I have a great rapport with uh, young people, so I just uh, stepped in and volunteered. That cretin is not in our band, and we are not responsible for his actions. Number seven, The Hobbit Trilogy. What have we done? Squeezing over eight hours of film out of a 300-page book is milking more than any cow can produce. No, nope, you can't come in, you come to the wrong house. What? Has it been cancelled? No one told us. Can no, nothing's been cancelled. That's a relief. After announcing that the second Hobbit movie would be split in two, director Peter Jackson defended New Line Cinema, saying it was more his decision than the studio's, and that the choice had really been made by J.R.R. Tolkien, who'd written extra appendices. I wish you all the luck in the world. We suppose that's fair enough. But no matter how passionate Jackson is about the story, there's no denying the fact that there are plenty of fanboy bucks to be made here. Turn around and do not come back. Number six, S. Darko, a Donnie Darko tale. Okay, well, now what? This indie sci-fi movie, which was panned by critics and hated by Donnie Darko fans, was such a cash grab fail that the first film's writer-director Richard Kelly felt the need to announce his lack of involvement long before it was released. In S. Darko's defense, its well-intended efforts and production were admirable. Uh, it's not very important. 
But everyone already knows, or should at least, that no low-budget sequel could hold a candle to the original. I am so f***ing sorry. Especially without Jake Gyllenhaal to hold the fantasy reality world together. I died for you. Will you do the same? Don't you like to draw? Number 5. Jaws The Revenge With a new writer, director, cast, story, and shark, we know that the movie's only correlation to the original Spielberg masterpiece is its name. Oh! I guess that's bad. Depends on your point of view. In their desperation to capitalize on the franchise, the creators of this film spared every expense on special effects and forgot to tell a logical, interesting story. No, no, no. If you'd have made them right, it wouldn't. It wouldn't happen. A they leaked. A man could find more conk on the mountainside. You couldn't find your ass with both hands. Yeah, that's fair, man. Even better, this one ignores the events and continuity of the previous sequel. There's never been a great white where we live. Ever. It's warm water. They don't like it. Besides the branding, the only reason this movie exists is because scary ocean movies were popular in the late 80s. <laughs> It earned its Rotten Tomatoes rating of zero. I had to do it. There was nothing else to do. Mom, you shouldn't have done it. I tried to tell you. I tried. Well, what's going on? Number four, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. I swear to Christ, it was an accident. Artisan entertainment employees were tripping over themselves to film a sequel ASAP when the Blair Witch Project set the psychological horror genre on fire and made the found footage horror film a thing. That's why I'm here. They wanted to rush a sequel so quickly and so badly that they couldn't wait for the original producers or directors to get on board and trekked on without them. More capitalism based on fear and lies. Betraying its predecessor by more closely resembling a traditional horror flick, Book of Shadows actually did make money. But was it any good? Nobody's scared. It's a boy. Number 3. Son of the Mask I don't like it here. Save for Ben Stein, we have an all-new cast in this CGI-filled family comedy that features Jamie Kennedy and one creepy baby. It's as if the producers decided that the comedy and star power of Jim Carrey's original Mask could be replaced with as many visual effects as possible. I curse the day you created that thing. And they definitely focused on quantity and not quality in that regard. Now hold on. Where's everybody going? So what happens? The dog gets a mask. The Norse gods get a mask. The baby's born with mask powers. Mask, mask, mask. It's intense, stupid, and kind of unsettling. Hey, we both knew it would end like this, right? You always set me up to fail. At least in that respect, I'm living up to your expectations. Silence! Number two. Dumb and Dumberer when Harry met Lloyd. It's hard to believe that the studio had nine years to release this poorly written prequel in response to the cult status and popularity of the original Farrelly Brothers film. Can you do that? Oh yeah, Harry. He can. He did. Even with relatively unknown leads replacing Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, and oddly inaccurate 90s references for its 1986 setting, it actually had a theatrical run. Yeah, what was your name again? Harry. Harry. Come with me, Harry. But the Farrelly's had no involvement and were not surprised. Okay. So it's settled. It's up to you whether their bona fide sequel writes this film's wrongs. What stinks? That'd be me, sir. Before we cash in on our top pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable, mentions. When you think about me, and I know you do, how do you picture it? Wow, you have an actual camel camel toe. It's an awful lot of hair. Why don't you shut your mouth? You were in Patrick Bateman's apartment. That night he killed Clara. 
Yeah. It's better to be alone with yourself for the rest of your life than to be together with bad company for a minute. I'm gonna be alone for the rest of my life? Number one, Ace Ventura Jr., Pet Detective. <laughs> You're kidding me, right? Even as recently as five years ago, either they still hadn't learned not to make a sequel of a Jim Carrey comedy without him, or the people responsible never cared. Alrighty then. The humor of Ace Ventura's 1 and 2 lay in Carrie's unique ability to act like a child while being competent with his adult peers and responsibilities, ish. That concept is dismissed to market this sequel to children and children alone. That's not normal. It was a disposable direct-to-video movie and a show business shame. <coughs> Do you agree with our list? Which cash grabs did we miss? To fill in on more top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Thank you for all your cooperation.